Hello, my name is Ray Bowman. I've spent 30 years in international trade, both import and export. I'm a certified global business professional. I'm the director of the EDC Small Business Development Center. This is an SBA program that provides free business advising services to small and medium-sized companies. I'm also the program chair for the Southern California District Export Council. We're a group of volunteers appointed by the U.S. Secretary of Commerce to promote U.S. exports. I'm also a professor at Cal Lutheran University as well as Santa Barbara City College, teaching courses in supply chain logistics, trade finance, and international business. I belong to a number of trade associations, including the American Association of Importers and Exporters, as well as NASBITE, who not only developed and certified the CGBP designation, but is dedicated to promoting uh, small business international trade education throughout the world. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about foreign exchange and how that affects international business transactions. So, Foreign exchange, a foreign exchange market helps businesses convert one currency into another currency. So what are some of the things that affect currency? Well, interest rates affect currency. So when U.S. interest rates uh, fluctuate, that also affects uh, our currency as well. Inflation rates will also affect currency. So if the U.S. inflation rate has become higher, those U.S. goods would become less competitive. So that's a factor as well. The balance of payments. So in other words, the balance of payments between countries will affect the value of their currency and affect their, um, uh, their currency exchange rate. As well as speculative buying. So uh, if there's speculation that uh, one currency um, you know, is, is hotter or trendier than another might affect also how that currency is reflected in its value. So the value of currency is also affected by things like depreciation uh, of the home country's currency as well as appreciation of a currency as well. So you have to look both ways at both how currency is affected by the appreciation of currency as well as the depreciation. So right now uh, U.S. currency is valued less than it has been in quite a while and that is pushing up the demand for our products because our products are more affordable. Likewise, appreciation of our currency um, can also affect by suppressing the buying of our products in other countries. So if you look at that from the uh, perspective of both buyer and seller in different countries, then uh, you have a lot of different combinations of what currency looks like and what appreciation and depreciation look like. So uses of foreign exchange in international trade transaction. Uh, one is to buy and sell in the foreign currency um, so, that you can, um, so that you can transact in different denominations of currency. So you might be a buyer um, that would prefer to buy in a foreign currency or you may be a seller that's been asked to quote um, in a foreign currency. Um, currency is also an issue if you're looking at hedging that risk. So if you're, let's say that you're in the US and you're selling to Australia and you want to, um, to prevent any future uh, risks that you might get into, then you might hedge that currency. Uh, and we'll talk about hedging a little more. The other thing is to hedge currency for operational risks. In other words, not hedging currency as far as protecting the loss of profit in an export transaction, but having an overseas subsidiary where you're trying to hedge that operational risk. Let's say you're financing that operation in an overseas country and you want to protect against your, your costs going severely up or down because of how the currency um, uh, fluctuates within that country. And also to negotiating sales. Um, so if you're negotiating price, you want to make sure that you have the price, um, that you get the profit that you expect, and fluctuations in currency can affect that. So one way to buy currency is on the spot market. So let's say that I did an international transaction, uh, I quoted the transaction of foreign currency, now the buyer pays me in that foreign currency, now I have to convert that foreign currency to my home currency. So one way to do it is on the spot market. 
Or let's say I have payables and receivables in an overseas subsidiary and I'm funding that subsidiary, then I might choose to buy on that spot market. Now the disadvantage with buying on that spot market is you'll get whatever the currency is valued at that moment. If the currency fluctuates from one day, from one month, or one period to the next, that can affect uh, your overall costs or your expectations that you had for those costs. Another way to buy currency is what's called a forward contract. So not to be confused with a forward contract, um, meaning a commercial agreement that sets a rate in the future. This has to do with hedging. So a forward contract on currency is a rate based on a future date. So in other words, let's say that I'm um, selling my goods to Australia. I've got a transaction there. And I know that that transaction is going to settle. In other words, I'm going to get paid in about 90 days. I might choose to go into a forward contract for 90 days. If I do that, that means that I will promise to pay a bank in foreign currency, currency that I will receive 90 days from that date. So it's a way of getting a future interest rate or future conversion rate based on a, um, a forward contract or, or uh, based on a contract or a transaction that you're going to do in the future. Another safer way, because when you just do a forward contract, one of the downsides about that is, is that the money is owed to the bank that's quoting you that conversion rate on that day. So let's say we have that 90-day transaction. Well, you have to make sure you get paid on day 90 so that you have those funds to revert to the bank to get that special rate. But let's say that like a lot of international transactions, you can't really predict when it pays you know, the exact day when it pays. So let's say that you were paid on day 100 instead of day 90. Well, what you'd be faced with at that point is now you have a bank saying that you now have a currency contract where you have to give them that currency and it's due at that day 90. Well, since you didn't get paid in, those foreign, in that foreign currency, that means now you have to buy on the spot market that currency to give to that bank to fulfill that contract. Then let's say now at day 100 when you got paid, you'll have to go again and convert that money on the spot market. So now you have a net loss on that currency because you weren't able to deliver the currency on time to the bank. So one way to avoid that or one way to manage that is with a forward window contract. What a forward window contract is, is instead of going to the bank and simply getting a forward contract, you would get a contract with a window of time built in. So on a forward window contract, it's typical for a bank to give you about 30 days settlement plus or minus the date that you think it's going to settle. So now if, uh, if the deal settles on day 100 or day 90, day 95, um, that you're covered. So you can kind of relax a little bit more because you have a window of settlement within that forward contract. So I always recommend that if companies are going to, uh, especially exporters, quote in a foreign currency, that they not only get a forward contract, but a forward window contract. And a forward window contract costs a little bit more, but it really doesn't cost all that much more considering uh, the amount of risk that it helps you manage. So um, again, a forward window contract allows you to buy currency at a certain rate in the future with a window settlement so it gives you a bit of time. Now the one thing that I always caution exporters is is when you hedge currency you're um, uh, through a bank you're not going to t get the advantage of the currency if the currency moves in your favor. In other words if the price that you quoted now um, now you're in a situation to where you can make more money, you're not going to get that advantage. So again, when you're, um, when you're hedging currency, you're getting the value that you expect, but you're also depriving yourself of the opportunity of future gains. So that's a decision that you have to make. Hedging and receivables. For companies, they often get receivables in foreign dollar payments. In other words, they may get open account 
payments in foreign dollars. So a best practice for a lot of companies is to shop uh, where they deposit those receivables. So it's not unusual to see an international company that gets a number of foreign receivables to have more than one account with several different banks so that they can shop around the conversion rate of those receivables that they get. So that's a good best practice and again it's not unusual for an international company that's doing a lot of transactions to have more than one bank account um, not only for uh, to ease uh, simplification of finding uh, good correspondent relationships but also from the aspect of currency and depositing receivables. Hedging for foreign operation expense. Again, the same uh, type of idea of hedging for a transaction can be applied to an operation. So let's say that you have an operation, you're in the U your U.S. company, you have an operation in Italy, and you're funding that operation through the profits that you have in the U.S. And let's say that uh, your operational expense in that country is $50,000 a month. Well, you may choose to hedge that risk. So you might buy six months worth of operating currency so that you make sure that you know what your expenses are going into the future. And a lot of companies will do this. If you can imagine a company with multiple operations in multiple countries, they have to work very closely with their banks to make sure that they're hedging their foreign currency risk in all of those markets. Now again, these strategies require you to work closely with your international bank and your foreign exchange division of that bank to develop these strategies for you. So it's really done in teamwork with a good international bank. Lastly, if you don't want to hedge, if you don't want to get into buying and selling currency or uh, shopping the, uh, the spot rate, there's another alternative to do it. And I've done this before very successfully. And that's to negotiate a floor and ceiling when you negotiate your sales agreements or your purchasing agreements. In other words, you might set up an agreement that offers discounts if the currency goes too much in your favor or, um, or offer the opposite if the currency goes the opposite way. So in other words, it's very hard um, and you often don't want to decrease or increase your selling price or your price list, but what you can do is you can put into a contract a discount or rate increase based on the currency fluctuating um, you know, to a certain extent. So uh, whether that extent is whether the currency fluctuates 5%, 10%, whatever you negotiate between buyer and seller. It's a way of making sure that neither side benefits or is damaged too much by the fluctuation in currency. And again, this is something that you can do within your buying and selling agreements. However you do it though, it's very important that you understand the impact of currency and exchange rates if you're doing international business. And uh, not only watching it from a standpoint of managing risk, but also forecasting sales. Uh, if you know that when your currency weakens to a certain extent, that might increase your sales, it's something you want to forecast for. Likewise, if you know that if your currency gets strong to a certain point, that may repress sales, uh, then again, that's something that you want to be able to forecast for. So either way, currency is an important issue. And if you get into uh, hedging, again, work with a good international bank. Uh, and work with those professionals that can help you with those strategies. So I hope this is a helpful tutorial for you.